Hey meal prepper, welcome back to Sweet Peas and Saffron. I am Denise and I share easy meal prep recipes that will give you your time back later in the week. Today I wanna to talk about the Instant Pot. So if you've hung around my channel for any length of time, you will know that I am a diehard Instant Pot fan. So I shared a video earlier in 2019 about my favorite meal prep recipes that I make in the Instant Pot. So these are like full on recipes that you can portion out and enjoy through the week. But I also love using the Instant Pot to do ingredient prep. So prepping a big batch of something and then using it up in multiple recipes through the week or freezing for later. So today I'm gonna to share my favorite recipes to use for ingredient meal prep. Our first recipe is a whole chicken. So it's really easy to cook a whole chicken in the Instant Pot, it's super hands off. You can cook it from frozen, which is really convenient if you're like me and you forget to thaw the chicken. So I'm going to share my recipe, but if you are looking for a meal prep plan to use your chicken up in, I will link you to my whole chicken meal prep video up here. So to start, we're gonna to wanna to weigh our chicken because the cook time depends on the weight of your chicken. So make sure that you have a kitchen scale or you keep the tag that comes with your whole chicken when you purchase it. Next, we're going to mix together a super simple spice blend and we're going to create like a little paste with some olive oil. And then we're going to take a third of this mixture and press it under the skin of the breast of the chicken. So you can loosen the skin first using a spoon. We're also gonna take a third of this paste and sort of rub it all over the surface of the chicken. Honestly, I was kind of timid how I was putting it on the chicken here. You can really get in there with your hands and just rub it all over the surface. We're also going to add a third of the spice paste into the cavity of the chicken. And into the cavity of the chicken, we will add lemon and onion. All right, now that our chicken is prepped, we're gonna get our Instant Pot out. So to the bottom of your Instant Pot, you're going to add water, and then place your trivet over the water and place the chicken on the trivet. We will put the lid on the Instant Pot, set the valve to ceiling and cook for the appropriate time based on the weight of your chicken. So it's six minutes per pound for a fresh chicken. Once the timer on the Instant Pot has beeped, you will allow it to fully naturally depressurize. So this should take about 15 minutes. And then the next step is optional, um, but I like to do it just because it's super simple and it adds a little bit of extra flavor to the meat. So we're going to transfer it to a baking dish and stick it under the broiler for about three to five minutes. This will totally depend on the strength of your broiler. So if you're going to use your whole chicken for meal prep, I recommend letting it cool as much as possible before shredding it because this just helps so much with sealing in the juices. And since you're going to store it for a couple of days, keeping the meat nice and juicy is definitely important. Okay, our second ingredient meal prep is steel cut oats. I am a total steel cut oats fanatic. I make it every week, sometimes twice a week. Um, I just love it. And I'm not really an oatmeal person in the past. I thought it was really mushy and gross, but steel cut oats have the best texture. Um, and the Instant Pot makes it so much easier to cook than on the stove top or the slow cooker, both of which have kind of given me like burn issues. So to our Instant Pot, we are going to add steel cut oats, cinnamon, vanilla, and water. We're gonna put the lid on and pressure cook for two minutes. And then we will allow the pressure to release naturally. So this will take like 20 to 30 minutes. Once the pot has naturally depressurized, you can open the lid and stir in some maple syrup. When I go to heat up my steel cut oats, I pop them in the microwave for a couple of minutes and then I add some oat milk, some peanut butter, some maple syrup to taste, and a sprinkling of hemp hearts. This is my all time favorite breakfast. Like this is total comfort food for me and this is what I crave all the time. Our next ingredient is spaghetti squash. So I love spaghetti squash, but it takes forever to cook. So having it meal prepped before will make me way more likely to eat it and makes dinner so much easier to prep. My method for cooking spaghetti squash in the Instant Pot is a little different because I like to leave the spaghetti squash whole and then cut into it after it's cooked through. The cooked spaghetti squash is so much easier to cut into. The seeds are super easy to scoop out and you always get like the perfect texture of your noodles. 
and you also get nice long noodles as well. Now you're going to want to know the weight of your spaghetti squash before you start because depending on the size of your spaghetti squash, the cook time will differ. So I have a three pound spaghetti squash and I'm going to poke it all over with a paring knife. To our Instant Pot, I'm adding water, the trivet, and we're going to put the spaghetti squash on top of the trivet. Put the lid on the Instant Pot, set the valve to sealing, and we are going to cook depending on the size of our spaghetti squash. So since I have a three pound spaghetti squash, I am cooking for 25 minutes. When the Instant Pot beeps, we will do a quick pressure release, and you can test if your spaghetti squash is cooked through by poking it with a paring knife. So if the knife inserts easily, it's probably ready to cut in half. And if you feel a lot of resistance, I would maybe put it back in for five more minutes. So once our spaghetti squash is cooked through, we will carefully transfer to a cutting board. You might wanna let it cool for about 10 minutes till it's a bit safer to handle. And then we will cut it in half. Carefully scoop out the seeds. And then you can just kind of use a fork to work your way around the spaghetti squash and get your nice, beautiful noodles. Now for meal prep, I do recommend undercooking your spaghetti squash ever so slightly because when you go to cook it, you will probably be heating it and cooking it a second time. So this recipe does cook a slightly al dente spaghetti squash. If you want softer noodles, you are free to add five minutes onto the cook time. My next favorite thing to prep in the Instant Pot is a big batch of beans. So I cook black beans and chickpeas all the time. My recipes do not involve soaking, so I know this is like a contentious issue. Some people believe that by soaking your beans, you will relieve the digestive issues that come along with eating beans. That's just never been an issue for us in our house. Like we don't notice a difference um, soaked versus no soaked. So I go for the no soaked because I just never can remember to soak them anyways, so we just skip this step. So to cook black beans and chickpeas, I use a very similar method. The first thing that I do is I will weigh out a whole pound, so I use my kitchen scale to do this. And then I'll kind of like look through the beans and the chickpeas and look for any bad ones. You can find stones, you can find um, moldy ones or just like damaged ones. The next thing that we do is rinse the beans and chickpeas. We're going to add our beans or chickpeas to the Instant Pot and we're going to add water. Now this will depend on which one you're cooking so refer to the recipe card. We are also adding salt and bay leaves. Put the lid on the Instant Pot, set the valve to sealing, and we're gonna pressure cook for the appropriate amount of time for whichever bean you are cooking. Let the pot naturally depressurize, and your beans and chickpeas are cooked through. So I love cooking beans in the pressure cooker because they taste 100 times better than canned. They're cheaper. And even though it makes a big batch, they're easy to portion out and freeze. So I like using the WEC jars to portion out and freeze my beans. And they keep in the freezer for like up to three months, probably more, but to be honest, we go through them so quickly, they never last that long. Our next recipe is hard boiled eggs. Actually, I'm gonna show you how to make hard and soft boiled eggs. So I don't actually really like hard boiled eggs, but my son likes them. If you remember from Kai's snack drawer video, which I will link you to up here, that's one of the like high protein snacks that I can actually make for him that he will eat. So we have been prepping a fair amount of hard boiled eggs lately. So to make hard boiled eggs, you will add to your Instant Pot some water, the trivet, and place your eggs on the trivet. So for hard boiled eggs, we're going to cook for six minutes. And for soft boiled eggs, we're going to cook for three minutes. When the Instant Pot beeps, you will do a quick pressure release and then transfer your eggs to an ice water bath. I like to peel my eggs right in the ice water bath. So to get them started, I just tap them on a cutting board and kind of roll them all over so they crack all over and then put them in the ice bath to peel.
The next ingredient I love prepping in the Instant Pot is sweet potatoes. So when I first started using my Instant Pot, I was super excited to cook sweet potatoes, but I was disappointed by recipe after recipe that left my sweet potatoes not cooked through. And so I set out and tested like a ton of different size sweet potatoes. And I have a handy chart on my site that will tell you how long to cook your sweet potato based on the width of your sweet potato. So to cook sweet potatoes in the Instant Pot, the first thing you'll do is scrub down your sweet potatoes and prick them all over with a fork. Next, we're going to add some water to our Instant Pot, place the trivet over the water, and place your sweet potatoes on the trivet. Put the lid on, set the valve to ceiling, and cook for the appropriate amount of time based on the width of your sweet potato. When the timer beeps, we're going to let the pressure naturally release for about 10 minutes before releasing any remaining pressure. And that's it for your Instant Pot sweet potatoes. I love cooking these ahead because they save so much time during the work week. Like I don't have a, an hour to be roasting up sweet potatoes. So if I have them already cooked through, um, it's just so much easier to either rewarm them in the oven or cut them up and add them to salad or you know whatever recipe I'm cooking. So those are my favorite ingredients to prep in the Instant Pot. I would love to hear if you guys have a favorite ingredient that I haven't mentioned because I am always looking for new things to experiment with with my Instant Pot. If you're into meal prepping with your Instant Pot, you are going to love the next video because I am showing you four of my favorite Instant Pot meal prep recipes. These are complete meals that you can cook in your Instant Pot. They're so simple, there's no sauteing or anything. So check it out over here.